In SwiftUI, the simplest type of animation is an implicit one. We tell our views ahead of time, if someone wants to animate you, here's how you should respond, and nothing more. SwiftUI will then take care of making sure any changes that do occur follow the animation you requested. In practice, this makes animation trivial. It literally could not be any easier. Let's start with an example. We'll write some code that shows a simple red button with no action, using 50 points of padding and a circular clip shape. Button, tap me, do nothing. Dot padding, 50. Dot background, color dot red. Dot foreground color, dot white. Dot clip shape, circle. What we want is for that button to get bigger every time it's tapped. And we can do that with a new modifier called scale effect. You provide this with a value from zero up and it'll be drawn at that size. A value of 1.0 is equivalent to 100%, i.e. the button's normal size. Because we want to change the scale effect value every time the button's tapped, we need to use an at state property. But there's a catch here. For historical reasons, mostly around interacting with Apple's older APIs, we need to use a specific data type called CG float. CG float is, for all intents and purposes, a double under a different name. But on older hardware, it uses a smaller type of number storage called float. Back when this choice mattered, CG float allowed Apple not to care about which type of hardware we were building for. But nowadays, almost everything uses double, so it's just a piece of legacy staring at us with disgust. Anyway, all this matters because if we make the property var animation amount equals one, we get an integer. And if we use var animation amount equals 1.0, then we get a double. But there is no built-in way to get a CG float automatically. We need to use a type annotation. So please add this property to your view now. At state, private var, animation amount, CG float equals one. Now we can make the button use that for its scale effect by adding this modifier. Dot scale effect, animation amount. Finally, when the button's tapped, we want to increase the animation amount by one. So use this for the button's action. Self dot animation amount plus equals one. If you run that code, you'll see you can tap the button repeatedly to have it scale up and up. It won't get redrawn at increasingly high resolutions, so as the button gets bigger, you'll see it gets a bit blurry, but that's okay. Now, the human eye is highly sensitive to movement. We're extremely good at detecting when things move or change their appearance, which is what makes animation both so important and so pleasing. So, we can ask SwiftUI to create an implicit animation for our changes so that all the scaling happens smoothly by adding an animation modifier to the button. Dot animation, Dot default. That asks SwiftUI for a default animation, and immediately you'll see that tapping the button now causes it to scale up with an animation. That implicit animation takes effect on all properties of the view that change, meaning that if we attach more animating modifiers to the view, then they'll all change together. For example, we could add a second new modifier to the button, blur, which lets us add a Gaussian blur with a special radius. Dot blur, Radius, animation amount minus one, times three. A radius of animation amount minus one times three means the blur radius will start at zero, no blur, but then move to three points, six points, nine points, and beyond as you tap the button. If you run the app again, you'll see that it now scales and blurs smoothly. The point is that nowhere have we said what each frame of the animation should look like. And we haven't even said when SwiftUI should start and finish the animation. Instead, our animation becomes a function of our state, just like the views themselves.